Caras, a copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 219 regarding a holdup on Vermont near 8. Suspect described as male, American, 5 feet, 10 inches, weight about 150 pounds. This man is armed and dangerous. That is all, Gordon. Criminologist is often asked, what are the contributory causes of crime? This, of course, is a complicated subject and cannot be treated in a few words. But it may be safely said that it is rarely heredity, but almost always physical and social environment. That is, lack of proper home conditions, lack of good influence, bad companionship. One of the worst of all influences springs from making a criminal a romantic, glamorous figure in whose footsteps it is easy and attractive to follow. The criminal possesses none of these attributes. His path through life is the thorniest of all, and very often is cut short by the avenging bullet of the guardians of the law. No, the criminal's life is not a paying one and should be shunned. He should always be presented as he is, a scourge of civilized society, never left at peace, but always hunted, never daring to call any man his friend, one whom all decency shuns. Crime is not a paying proposition. In proof whereof... Listen to a true story as taken from the files of agencies of law enforcement. The case history of Dallas Egan. Dallas Egan, you have been delivered to me, the warden of this penitentiary in order that the sentence of the court should be executed against you. Before we carry out this sentence, is there anything you'd like to say? Yes, Warden, there is. Go ahead, Egan. The first thing I want to do is thank Eddie Romero for helping send me to the place I'm now standing. Ah, don't look so shocked, Eddie. It's a favor, believe me. You know, I heard a slogan once. I don't particularly remember where I heard it first, but I do remember what a laugh I got out of it. It said, <laughs> crime doesn't pay. <laughs> I'll never forget what a boot I got out of that. I was tough, see? I knew all the answers. In fact, I wrote most of the questions. My buddy and me used to use that slogan as a private joke of ours. Every time we held up a joint and knocked off some bird, we'd always say, Atta boy, kid, crime don't pay much. Now, I'll never forget that night back in 1918. I was just a punk kid then. They're starting out on what I laughingly called my career of crime. The kid and me decided we needed a car for a job we were going for. Is this your car, mister? Why, well, yes, it is. Why? You're a doctor, ain't you? Yes. Ain't gonna need your car tonight, are you? Oh, my 
course I am. Oh, no, you ain't. What do you mean? Never mind. Get in. Now, look here, young man. You can't talk to me that way. No, I said get Be in. careful of that gun. Stop stalling. Get in. Get going, Eddie. Sure, pal. You, you, you can't get away with this, young man. You'll get caught. Yeah, I know. Crime don't pay. <laughs> what do you say, Eddie? Not much. What are you going to do with me? Why don't you throw him out, Sam? Good idea, Eddie. Open the door, you... No. No, don't throw me out going at this speed. It'll kill me. Ain't that tough. Get going. I said get out. Oh! That's shocking him, Dal. Gee. I never knew a guy bounced like that when he hit the pavement. That's the first time we really had to get tough with the mugs. Oh, we didn't get away with it. That ain't the point. That crime didn't pay neither. We got picked up the next night. We were streaking along the highway down in Oklahoma when a couple of cops on bike. Step on this can, Eddie. Them cops is gaining on us. What do you think I'm doing now? This is all this heap's got. Here they come, Eddie. That's for you, combat. <laughs> Grab the wheel, Dal. I'm hit. <laughs> leaving us today, I see. Yeah. Learn your lesson? Maybe. I don't think some of you youngsters ever will learn. Yeah, that... crime doesn't pay. Yeah, I know, I know. I wonder if you do, Egan. I wonder if you'd keep on going the way you have if you really realize the truth of that statement. Well, uh, I've had five years to think about it. And you still don't believe it, do you? You still think you can beat the law, don't you? Sure, sure, cops is dumb. I can outthink them every time. You didn't this time. Oh, well, that wasn't my fault. I can beat him. You're going to keep on trying? Maybe. Who knows? Well, there's one consolation. If you do come back, you'll do your time the hard way. Yeah, it's all right. I can take it. There I was. After five years in the can telling the warden what a tough mug I was. I didn't care then. I didn't have any reason to care about anything. I didn't really believe that smart talk, because down inside me I was afraid. I was afraid some other rat would think I was afraid. I'd got to the point by then where I had to be tough. That's why that night in the drugstore, just after I got out of the street. All right, you mug, get him in the air. What? Look, what do you want? What do you think? Reach for air. Hey, you, give me that jack and the tail. Yes, sir. Is that all of it? Yes, sir. Let me look. Hey. Hey, where you going? Come back here. I said back here. Hey, fuck. Why you shot him? So what? You want a slug of this? No, now no. Now give me no. a trap shot. Get back against that wall. Go on. Hey, you give me a dough. I said give me it. Oh. It'll teach you to move fast when I say move. I guess the guy was too scared to get a good look at me. Anyway, they never picked me up on that one. That made me confident, see? That was a job that did pay. I was on my way. I knew how to operate now. I could be a big shot. And then I met a pal of mine from the old days. That five-year stretch I did. It was in the Middle West. We decided to look into the back. You think you got a sure thing, do you, Joe? Sure, it's a sure thing. Here's a plan. I got a pal in this bank in this little town where we're going. He's supposed to be a guard. We take another bird with us, a fellow we used to know in the stir. He's a rat anyway. Well, when we cops the coin, this guard pal of mine blasts away at, at us. But he's careful to get this friend of ours. This stir simple bird we're going to take along, get it? Yeah. Yeah, I get it all right, but I don't like it. Why not? It's a cinch. All we do is walk in there, throw our rods on these guys, and they cough up. Yeah? Where's this trigger man pal of yours all this time? We got him covered, too. When we start out, we go first with the dough. This other monkey covers us till we get to the car. Then he gets his. We cut two ways instead of three. Ah, yeah, sounds risky. What's the matter with you? Yeller? Listen, rat. Don't call me yeller. I don't get sore. I didn't mean no harm by it. All right. I still claim I don't see nothing to keep this guard from letting you or me have it when we throw down on him. He's fixed, see? I know enough on him to send him up from now on. He's been knocking down on this bank for years. He won't double-cross us. He'll find living conditions around here mighty unhealthy if he does. I'm telling you, he's on the level. If he ain't, he will be when I finish with him. Then we got to take this joint. Anytime you say. Tomorrow. Okay. Let's do it at closing time tomorrow. worrying about him. I just want to know who to go for when something goes wrong. Nothing's going wrong, I tell you. Come on. Where's that stir monkey? That's what I'm wondering. Hey, what is this? Are you giving me the malarkey? No, I'm on the up with you, Egan. I wouldn't cross a pal. <laughs> no sooner than you with the Brooklyn Bridge. You know what I think? No, what? I think you never had another bird lined up for this job. You figured I'd take the rap for this one and you'd get the whole roll, didn't you? No, no, I didn't. Honest, I didn't. I wouldn't do that to a pal. Okay, pal. 
We'll just find out about this. Now, come on. We're doing this job just the same. I don't think that's a good idea, Dal. Two of us in all. No, you don't think it's a good idea, huh? Come on, you yellow muzzler. We're going to take that dump on high. And you're going in first and coming out last. No, no, Dal. I, I can't do that. Don't make me do that, Dal. Get gone. Make us stall and I'll blast you myself. Come on, get in there. Get him up. Grab a handful of air and hold on to it. All right, Joe, get that door. Keep your head down back there in that guard cage unless you want me to blast it off with a Tommy gun. Make it snappy, Joe. I am. Keep your shirt on. Nice place you got here, mister. This your name on the little cot out here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Jones, eh? Well, it's a nice place, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Matter Jones, nervous or do you stutter all the time? Uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm nervous, sir. You ought to take something for that. It'll get you down. Let's scram. Take it easy, Joe. After me, you know. Okay, okay, but let's get moving. Looks like your pal of God's getting ready for fireworks. Where? No, Bill! No, don't do it, Bill! Oh, please, no! Well, you dirty rat. Here's a present for you, Bill! <laughs> I'll never forget the look on that guard's face when I let that chopper go off in his mush. He folded up like an accordion. My pal, Joe, was still there when I left. Unfortunately, I didn't know just what our rat Joe was. He tipped the cops off and they was waiting for me when I got out of the bank. Well, all they could pin on me was attempted bank robbery. That was a joke. I had a record, see? I was what the judges was calling a habitual criminal. That's a laugh. What chance did I have to be anything else but a criminal? Found a day and night, always just one jump ahead of the law of starvation. I tried to make a living. I couldn't get a job. Even as a kid, I was kicked around. Never enough to eat. Never a chance to go to school like other kids. No place I could ever call home. Ah, uh, uh, nuts. Who cares? I was hard, see? They knew I was hard, too. They put me away for another five years. But I went to the toughest hole this side of the island. You know about it. You know why I was sent there. They thought they'd break me. <laughs> Break me. Don't think they didn't try, though. You never heard about what happened up there, did you? No. No, no, and everybody heard about it except the warden and the doctor and the screw that guarded my cell. I spent three years in the hole. What do you think of that? How many of you birds would like to do that, huh? Want to know why they slammed me in the slough? I'll tell you. I hadn't been there a month when they called me as a warden. Is warden? Yes, Egan. I wanted to see if you were as tough as you used to be when I had you before. Well, if it ain't my old pal, the preaching warden. Crime don't pay, warden. Don't forget that. I haven't forgotten it, Egan. I'd remember it if I had looking at you. You're hard, Egan, but not the bravado hardness you had ten years ago. I've been around. Yes, so I gather. How old are you, Egan? It's on my card. Yes, I know, but you're really... 33, same's on the card. 33 years old and a prison record 15 years long. Is that what you brought me in here for? No. We have reason to believe you're in on a plot that's being hatched to make a break. Don't make me laugh, Warden. I've only been here a month. How would I know anything about it? That's what we intend to find out. Oh, yeah? You heard me. You've got your choice of telling me what you know or taking the slut. Warden... I'll uh, see you in Hades with your back broke before I tell you a thing. Have it your own way, Egan. You'll stay in the hole till you decide to talk. Three months. Three months in this hole. Three stinking months. No light. Not enough air to keep a fish alive. Where's that screw? Where's that screw? Hey, screw! You go and saw it. Be a man. You can take all the dish out. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. I've got to get out of here. I'm going nuts. Maybe I am. Maybe. Maybe I'm already nuts. Oh, God. Oh, let me go crazy. Let me keep my senses. Pull yourself together, Egan. You're acting like a four-year-old. Get your mind on something. Keep in one thing, you dope. Think of something you want. More than anything else in the hole. Don't think of this hole. Think of something. Think of something. Ready to talk, Egan? That's for you, Warden. Take it easy on yourself, Egan. Six months. Six months. Six months. Let me out of here. 
Let me out of here. I can't stand it any longer. I can't stand it. Alone. Darkness. Tapless. Alone. Alone. Come on, Egan. You're just a tough guy. Are you going to turn stool pigeon now? Think on somebody you don't even know? Maybe you could tell them you'd find out if they let you out. Maybe you could hatch up a break for yourself. Maybe you could do it. Maybe you could get out. Yeah. Warden! Hey, Warden! Get me the Warden! The Warden! Well, Egan, the guard tells me you're ready to talk. Yes, sir. Couldn't take it, huh, Egan? Sure, I could take it. You said you wanted the dope, didn't you? Well, let me out with the boys and I'll get it for you. I depend on that? Sure you can, Warden. Okay, guard. Put him in that block we're suspicious of. Come on, Egan. Go ahead, tough guy. All right, inside. a monkey. How come? Talk too much. Yeah. What's your handle? Dan Davis. Who are you? Dallas Egan. Heard about you. Heard what? You're a stoolie. Who said that? Hold ya. It's a cockeyed lie. Yeah. You heard me. How'd I know? Who gives a rap whether you do or not? I'm the guy you're supposed to think on. Yeah? Yeah. How am I supposed to know? I never saw you before. You ain't. They picked the wrong bird. How? You and me was in the same can once. Yeah? I never saw you before. Take a good look. What? Well, I'll be a wall-eyed sap. Kid. That's right. Well, well, what's this Davis stuff? That's me handle here. When was we in the same camp? I got out of Oklahoma just when you got in. And when'd you get here? Same day you did. I was in a hospital. I tried to lay him out of here. I got caught. So they thought I was in on him. Right. What happened? Stoley. What happened to him? They tried to lay him together. He got shot. God. He got shot. I get it. We're going to try it again. Who's we? Pal of mine. When? Tomorrow night when the guard changes. Yeah. How? Want to go? Sure, sure, but how? Me and me pal work in the quarry. It's a flying Dutchman rigged up from the derrick to the other side of the river. We can ride a pulley till we get halfway across the river. And then we got about 50 yards to go hand over hand to the bay. You can't do it. Don't be a sap. We can do it. It's too risky. What's the matter? Did solitary make you yellow? You know better than that. I'll be with you. And get out of that habit of calling me yellow. Well, Warden, you were right. They're going to try that pulley stunt. I figured they would. <laughs> Smart idea, putting that dick to draft in that cell. Yeah. Let them try their break. We'll be waiting for them. Hiding in the shadow of the derrick down there. Yes. I see them now. How far would you say it is down there? Oh, about a hundred yards to the wire, about two hundred across. Well, let them start. It looks like we won't have to wait long. No, I see Davis's pal starting now. Now. Right into the river. Looks like Davis's game. He's going to try it. Seems spot? Yes. Now. Two down, one to go. Have you stationed Frank on the other side? Yes, sir. Got an axe to cut the wire with. All right. Let's watch. Egan starting. I bet he's wondering what happened to the other two. Probably wondering why it doesn't happen to him. There he goes. Frank cut the wire. Well, let's go down and get him. Better call the ambulance. We'll slap him down in solitary. Solitary. I see him hang before I'll talk. How can I talk when I don't know nothing? Yeah, even if I did, I wouldn't talk. Another week of this place will be a raving maniac. Oh, what is that old time I told me? Think of one thing. Think of what you'd like to have most. Money. 
Women. Food. Food. That's it. Ham and eggs. I want ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. Ham and eggs is what I want. Ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. Uh, you get your neck broke if you don't stop yammering. I want ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. All I get them. All I get them. All I get them. The companion, the warden sent you, Egan. Yeah. What's this? This, my tough friend, is known as an idiot. <laughs> hey, hey, get this thing out of here! Get away from me! Get away from me! I tell you. Yeah. Wasn't it bad enough before without you in here? Get out! Get out! Shut up! Shut up! Get him out of here! Get him out of here! Hey, hey, wait a minute. That's what they want me to do. They want me to go crazy. What a hunt, bunny. Yeah. They want me to go crazy. What a hunt, bunny. Yeah. Hunt, bunny. Hunt, bunny. Hunt, bunny. Oh, my God. I'm saying it to him. I'm going crazy. I can't do this. Ham and eggs. 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 You fool? Oh, you're going to get ham and eggs. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See that goon over there? He's a man, ain't he? Why don't you kill him? Then they'd hang you. Then you'd get your ham and eggs. They always let a condemned man have what he wants. Do it, your sap. Do it now. Yeah. What'll I use? I can't do it with my hands. He's too big. He might not want to die. Yeah. Use a water bucket, sap. It's got a concrete bottom. They didn't care what kind of a bucket they gave you. Use that. Yeah. Hey. Hey, come here. I'll hunt bunnies. <coughs> I've done it. Now I'll get ham and eggs. Hey, God. Hey, screw. Shut up in there. Hey, screw. Hey, down in there. What's all this yammering about? What's yeah. coming off in here? You yeah, better get this stiff out of here. And call the warden. But, warden, we can't do anything about it. I know it. If anybody ever found out that we had two men in the same cell in solitary, we never would hear the last of it. That wouldn't be as hard to explain as the presence of that feeble-minded man in this place. Instead of an institution where he belonged. Well, how are we going to explain it? Have the doctor fill out the death certificate and give some accidental cause. Yeah. Yeah, say we might say he slipped on the floor of the shower room and fractured his skull. That's all right. Anything. Anything. Now bring Egan in here. Yes, sir. Bring Egan in. Inside, Egan. Sit down, Egan. When do I go on trial, Warden? For what? For that man in the cell. I don't know what you're talking about, Egan. Hey, maybe you haven't heard that a man was killed in solitary this morning. No, I haven't. However, I did hear about a poor fellow who slipped on the shower room floor and got a bad fracture. I understand he died sometime this morning as a result. Oh, I see. Yes, very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, very. By the way, Egan, I've noticed your memory is not what it used to be. I've been noticing it for some time now. You yeah. have? Yes. As a matter of fact, you forgot that you come up tomorrow for parole. Tomorrow? Yes, Egan. Tomorrow. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see you leaving us shortly. Very shortly. Our scene shifts now to Los Angeles, California, in the Superior Court. And now, Mr. Greenbaum... When this man, Egan, the defendant, walked into your jewelry store, what did he do? He told me to pull up my hand. Did you? And how? And then what happened? And then he locked me in the back room. Could you still see the front of the store? Yes. For a little peephole cut in the door. What happened after that? Then, then this Mr. Fitzgerald, he came in. Did you recognize him? Oh, yes. I knew him. He was one of my customers. I repaired his watch just a few days ago. He was deaf. He couldn't hear. Uh, what did he do? started to look up at the clock and set his watch. And, and this fellow Egan there... Hey, where you are? You hear me? 
I said don't come in here. There's a hole up. Stay where you are. Oh, I, oh you, you, you've killed him. Help. Police. Police. Help. Police. I kept saying all the way down the alley. Did you go back to the store? Yes, a few minutes. The police car came tailing up Vermont Avenue. That's where I have my store, and I came back in. And did you see this man Fitzgerald then? Yes, sir. He was lying right there in front of the clock. Uh, how was he? I mean, what condition was he in? He was dead. That is all, thank you. Your Honor, let's get this over with. I'm guilty. I told a cop that when he arrested me. I told a DA that ever since I've been in jail. Why waste time and money? Are you sure you realize what you're saying? Uh, of course I realize it. I've killed a half a dozen guys in the last 15 years, Your Honor. I'm no good. I've been a criminal for 18 years. I never was any good. I never will be. I beg Romero to let me make a break and to kill me. He wouldn't do it. You couldn't expect him to shoot you in cold blood, could Why you? not? I always did. What difference does it make? I'd have shot him if I had the chance. Young man, I don't want to take this plea without advice, advice of your counsel. You can stand trial, and the worst you'll get is a verdict of guilty. With this plea, you automatically sign your own death warrant. So what? Who gives a rap? I'm through, I tell you. What have I ever done to deserve to live? All I've ever done was steal and kill. I'm as sick of it as you guys are of me. Let's get it over with. Very well. In view of your own confession, it is the sentence of this court that you will be delivered to the warden of San Quentin Penitentiary. That sometime during the week of February 1st, you'll be hanged by the neck until you are dead. May God have mercy on That's why, Romero, that I said thanks to you when I began this talk. And that's why, warden, I say thanks to you. Spring the trap. Dallas Egan, alias Robert York was duly hanged for his crime. No man's misspent life ever proved so forcefully the futility of a life of crime. He proved beyond any doubt that crime does not pay.